one of the courses that I teach is uh, History 1B, which is a history of medieval Europe from the year 500 to 1500. And I guess my, my teaching style in that is kind of, I like to be, I like to be inclusive, I like to, to draw people in, I like to give them confidence in their ability to, to speak about things which, for the most part, they don't know an awful lot about. And I like to give them the, the confidence and the encouragement within the group that whatever they say will be taken seriously, will be taken sensibly, and that it's going to be fun, it's going to be enjoyable, but there'll be a kind of serious intellectual edge to it as well. And I normally start off in the first tutorial with um, a sort of icebreaker where I get people to split up into pairs and talk to each other about who they are, where they're from, why they've come to Glasgow, why they're doing history. And then I get everybody to change places once, do the same thing again, and then change places again. So that at the end of about 15 minutes, everybody has at least on first name terms with two other people in the group. And that breaks the ice quite well. People feel, okay, this is, this is actually not as bad as we thought it was going to be. One of the things that made me want to nominate Andy for the Student Teaching Award is his very genuine care that he has for all the pupils in his class. Um, he does a lot of icebreakers with us and he does a few speeches, um, but the main theme is that he sort of goes off topic from the seminar worksheets that we have. And I asked them to imagine themselves being somebody arriving in a village in the middle of England in 875. And they have to convert people to Christianity. So what would you say? How would you do it? Bear in mind that most people there haven't heard of Jesus, not quite sure who God is, never been anywhere near Rome, don't know who the Pope is. And all these issues, how do you get it across in three minutes? One of the best parts of Andy's tutorials was the speeches that he had us do, one in about week three and one very close to the end when the tutorial group was very comfortable with each other. And these make all the students, whether they're happy to speak in front of the class or whether they're a bit more reserved, they kind of force them to show their peers what their imagination is like and um, some of their skills in history as well. And the group got quite tight-knit in our tutorial, which was very nice. And there's a second speech which I asked people to do towards the end of the course, which is where Amy's speech comes in because this is about the Black Death. And I asked people again to do a speech and to imagine themselves back in Italy in 14th century and to take a role, either as a doctor or a peasant or a local member of the elite, maybe a priest, maybe a bishop, and speak for three minutes about their experience of the Black Death, what it's actually like to live through something that you don't actually know what's happening. You have no idea what a germ is. You have no idea what's going to happen to you because there's no cure for this. If you catch this, you're dead within about two or three days. Other things we should try and do on that, that, that same kind of idea of drawing people in and making it enjoyable is in one of the tutorials, I asked people to take a particular text, not all the texts that they've been given, but just one, split people up into pairs and ask them to discuss in detail the text that they've got in front of them and then again to swap places with another person to discuss a different text and to swap places again to discuss the same text with a different person so they get the idea that in history there's no one interpretation of a text there are different interpretations there are different ways of analyzing it different ways of reading it different ways of thinking about it and that generates a discussion within the group as a whole about you know, how valuable are some of these texts and where does the truth lie? 